Hey Savvy people, it's Savvy Nick here, and today we'll be going through and reviewing Parrot Linux 4.7. We'll first explore its contents and everything that it has to offer with its default desktop environment, and then I'll go ahead and give it some ratings. If you're new and stopping by to watch a review, please take a moment to subscribe below and hit the notification bell for more reviews. I'm kind of just going through things here, and my first impressions are that it feels and looks sort of like Windows, since it uses the Mate uh, desktop environment as its default here. The desktop is very minimal and non-cluttered. Don't have a lot going on here in the background. I like uh, the fact that it just has a very similar layout to uh, Windows, having your icons show up in the back here on the desktop and uh, kind of starting from the left uh, corner here and icons move out. Uh, you can also highlight in this uh, distribution, some you can't. It seems to have a uh, very dark tone for the background and uh, the rest of the applications in this distribution. Uh, as you can see here, we got applications and there's all sorts of stuff that comes pre-built with this. Now this is the uh, security package. They also have a uh, more minimal package, uh, sort of like a workstation that you can install if you don't need all the uh, forensics, pen testing, software development, engineering, hacking, and privacy packages that come standard in the security. You can see I'm going through here. And let's just go through some of these categories here. So they have the accessories, and on surf, cryptography, education, games, graphics, internet, office, pen testing, programming, sandboxes, sound and video system tools, and universal access. Up here on the top uh, left, you have a tab called Places, and it's kind of just like a shortcut tool, it seems like. And let's see what System is. So System has like administrative uh, controls as well as the Control Center. Uh, so you can log in and out of a user and different preferences for uh, the current user. Then up top, you just have a few shortcuts things such as Firefox, your web browser, the uh, terminal, which is very important in Linux, and uh, Pluma, so this is just a, a text file editor. You also have uh, three little rectangles here. It shows you what the process processor usage is. The current usage is zero. Uh, the memory usage, as well as the network usage. Other things that you have is in the corner, of course, the time. Uh, battery life, what uh, is connected as far as the network goes, and the volume for sound. In the bottom right, you have uh, workspaces. If you want to work in different workspaces, you can. So basically, just think of this as different desktops that you can be working in simultaneously here. Then you also have the automatic sleep enabled or disabled. You can click uh, to disable it down there. Parrot Linux is a distribution that focuses on security, privacy, and creating an easy-to-deploy development environment for the end user. It's very lightweight, and they also focus on making the transition from Windows to their distro since it has the Mate uh, desktop environment as their default. They supply tools for uh, pen testing, forensics, engineering, hacking, and privacy, so uh, we'll see some of that as we go through the menu here. Uh, the one I, uh, right here is pen testing. We can see if we click that. That's a subcategory that gives you a whole bunch of uh, programs that you can use for penetration testing. Uh, these are just different packages supplied by Parrot uh, as well as its community of developers. Then you have uh, programming. Uh, in the programming one, you have a SQL client uh, and a couple IDEs, a debugger, uh, Git, so you can go ahead and commit to a repository if you have one for it. Your program that you're creating. Uh, then uh, you have a compare and merge uh, meld application. You also have SQLite database automatically installed with Parrot. Uh, VS Codium's another type of IDE that you can use, although not as powerful as uh, G Genie up here. And a couple other applications. I'll go ahead and show you Genie real quick, just to kind of show you the ID that you get here for programmers right out the bat. And if you made it this far, go ahead and take a moment to like the video. It really does help me out. 
So I would like to just uh, create a C++ main file, maybe a hello world or something. What you can do is uh, create a new project and you can call uh, the workspace or sorry the project whatever you want so we're just going to call it a test project here the extension is uh, genie here for projects and uh, it says that the default location is the home user projects directory and uh, then it's going to name a new directory with uh, whatever you named your project so test project and in this project we can actually create a new file with a template so why not just use the main CPP template? And as you can see, it automatically generated a C++ file with a main function here for us. Something uh, I found that's a little funny is that uh, I doubt this will compile because it's missing a few things in order to be proper C++ syntax. So what we'll do is actually try building the current file. You can do that by hitting the little play button here. And once you hit that, you can see that uh, the compilation was terminated because there's errors here in the input file. So uh, uh, what we're missing here is a data type for the function. And since we didn't define a namespace, we have to tell the compiler where these are coming from here. So from the standard library, let's go ahead and try compiling it again. And this time it's asking us for a file name for the CPP file. We're just going to go ahead and put main in there, save that. And you can see down here that it successfully compiled this time. And then we can go ahead and run the current file and voila, you get a new terminal and it says give me a bottle of rum, which is kind of funny. Uh, again, this is their pre-built example here. We'll just exit out. And now you kind of get a look and feel for the IDE that comes standard. They also have another IDE. The one thing I noticed is when you're typing in a function, uh, the closing uh, brace doesn't get automatically populated. Um, the tabbing is uh, pretty good, about four spaces. Uh, you, I'm sure you can make edits to all of that inside this IDE. Overall, it has everything you can imagine and uh, debugging as well. So I'm just gonna exit out of here. I just thought it was pretty cool to use, so I might as well have uh, showed you how to use it a little bit there. Hopefully you can make something from what I showed you here. Uh, I don't really care, don't save it. Other things, uh, there are some really cool backgrounds if you like to go ahead and change those every once in a while. Uh, there's plenty to choose from in here. They got, uh, like I said, some really interesting and cool ones. Uh, let's see, this one's pretty cool. Let's just go ahead and uh, keep this one for now. <laughs> you also have, uh, if you hit, let's say home here, you get a file browser. And with this file browser, it's very similar to what you would see in Windows. Uh, similar icons, uh, similar names, desktop documents, downloads, music, etc. You got your trash here. You can browse the network, add local network uh, instances if you want. You get to see the file system, just like you would see under C. So this is the root file system here. You also have such things as bookmark bookmarks if you'd like to go ahead and bookmark a location that you've been or that you constantly go to. A go drop down here, which allows you to uh, go quickly to a few normally use locations, clear history, and uh, go back and forwards if you've been browsing already. The view uh, tab allows you to change the view and zoom in and out if uh, you have a hard time seeing these uh, names uh, or folders. You can go ahead and zoom in. Let's see how far we can zoom in real quick. Pretty far. <laughs> um, but that's the end there. So there's up to a 400% zoom. You can also use these uh, icons here in order to zoom in and out. You have different types of views too, the list view. I personally like the list view the most. Uh, you have the compact view, but like I said, I like the list view the most. Kind of reminds me of uh, doing ls-l in the terminal. 
And speaking of the terminal, that's the next thing I'm going to go ahead and check out. I believe there's two different types of terminals in here that you have access to. The uh, root terminal, they call it, and the uh, mate terminal. So I'm assuming the root terminal is the same as the mate terminal, uh, minus the fact that it's probably log logs into the root user when using it. So like, think of this as the administrative terminal versus just a normal terminal. We'll open the norm normal terminal up since you can just log in as a root user if you really want to. This is a unique uh, terminal because it kind of highlights the colors in very vibrant greens, blues, and yellows and you have even a little bit of red in here. As you can see the user is in green, the host name seems to be in uh, a bluish color and if we start typing in commands here, let's just do LSAL, they show up in green and you can see some documents are showing up in green and then you have folders seeming to turn out in a blue color. So the colors are a little bit all over the place but uh, it's it's kind of fun and uh, it kind of resembles I assume a parrot so I think that's why they did that. Let's go ahead and log in as a super user. So now you can see the root just became red. Maybe that's just a warning to make sure that you don't go doing something stupid and it shows you that you're logged in with uh, the root user at this point. Let's see if anything else changed here. Let's say L. So nothing in here changed really. None of the color scheme as log or with logging into the root user. Again, I, I like the colors, but maybe it's a little bit overwhelming uh, for some since if you're going to be using, uh, let's say, VI or Vim for editing files, I don't know if I'd like to be watching all these vibrant colors all the time on my screen. But again, you, I'm sure you can change this uh, stuff, whether or not that's having to hack into the uh, Linux distribution or there's an easy way to do it through the uh, top menu, I'm not sure. So we're going to go ahead and close out a terminal, and uh, and at this point I'll go ahead and stop and give it some ratings here. Parrot Linux is uh, growing in popularity and has a unique goal offering uh, the normal desktop as well as the security install, which includes uh, packages for pen testing, uh, forensics, engineering, hacking, and privacy. So I'll give it a popularity rating of 6 out of 10, although I'm sure it's going to be growing here. There seems to uh, be a lot of different applications added to the default security install and uh, it seems to focus heavily on user security, privacy, which is great. Although in order to do this, they must install very specific software and packages that a normal user would probably have a small learning curve in order to uh, use this distro. Also, the uh, desktop is very similar to Windows, so Taking those few things into consideration, I'll give it a user friendliness rating of uh, 6 out of 10. They have multiple different versions, so if you want to, you can get a lightweight version that focuses more on raw performance gains, keeping this uh, distribution very lean. So I'll give it a performance rating of 7 out of 10. And this distribution is also based off uh, the Debian stable branch and applies its own tools, utilities on top of that base system and then deploys uh, the Mate or KDE desktop environments with that base system. Based on this, I'll give it a features rating of 9 out of 10, since you can use the Debian community as well as the Parrot Linux community for help. And finally, since it does have a good size community supporting its effort here in Linux, and is based again off the Debian distribution, so you can get help from that community as well, I'll give it a sustainability rating of 7 out of 10. That gives it an overall score of 35 out of 50. And I hope you enjoyed this review and walkthrough of Parrot Linux 4.7. Let me know if you think the rating system is fair. And if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please post them in the comments section below. Also, make sure to subscribe for future videos and make sure to like the video. Thanks for watching.